All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. And today in this video, we're gonna give y'all the full camera review of the Samsung Galaxy S10e. So in my style of camera reviews, we go over everything. So we go over the software and the software interface. We go over the ways you can launch the cameras. Then I include all of my photo and video samples. And then at the very end of the video, I talk to you guys and gals vlog style as to whether or not I would recommend these devices strictly based on the cameras and as to I would recommend these devices overall. Because I know a lot of people just buy devices for the cameras and they only really care about the cameras. So that's why I do these camera reviews the way I do. Also, these videos can get really, really long. So this will be timestamped for your convenience. So please feel free to check out the timestamps down below in the video description so you can jump around to different parts of the video that you would like to know more about. All right, that being said, without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Now, starting off here, I just wanna go over the ways that you can launch into the cameras on your Samsung Galaxy device, all right? And please feel free to check out the demonstrations that will be up on the screen in post. Now, way number one, and this is kind of becoming an Android staple, and this has been on Galaxy devices for a while now, is you can jump into the cameras from any screen on your device as long as your device is powered on by double pressing the power button, okay? And the really sweet thing is the power button on the S10e is integrated into the fingerprint scanner. So nine times out of 10, by the time you're trying to hit that double tap to unlock, um, launch you into the cameras, you're pretty much already unlocking the device. But a simple double press of the power button will take you into the main camera interface, okay? Way number two, and this is also an Android staple, from the lock screen on your device, all you have to do is swipe up on the camera icon to take you directly into the main camera interface, okay? Real easy, real straightforward. And way number three, with the camera icon located on any screen on your device, all you have to do is find it and tap on it. And that too will take you into the main camera interface on your device. All right, so now we're getting ready to go through all the modes, all the features of the main camera interface from top to bottom, left to right, okay? Let's do this now. Now the first um, mode you see here in the main camera settings interface is the gear icon in the upper left hand corner. This will take you into the sub settings on your device so you can verify information and change different settings and features on the cameras. We're gonna cover that last. Right next to that, you guys see we have flash controls. So on, off, auto, pretty much self-explanatory. I tend to leave mine turned off. I don't like shooting with flash unless I absolutely have to. Right next to that, we have a timer. So two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, or off. Again, I don't like using timers unless I'm in video and we don't have a timer for video. So it just is what it is, all right? Then right next to that, we got our aspect ratio controls. So four by three, 16 by nine, one by one square, and then full frame, okay? So you mess around with it and you shoot in the ratio that you think works best for you, all right? Then right next to that, we got our mode. So you toggle that on, it will record a little bit of audio and video before the photo and a little bit of audio and video after the photo, okay? It's there, it's not something that I like to use, so I turn it off. Y'all will see the theme of this video as we go through. Pretty much anything that I try and I like, I leave turned on. Pretty much anything I try and I don't like, I turn it off, okay? Then right next to that, we have our filters here, okay? Got a variety of different filters, and if you hit the plus button, you can go and download more from the Galaxy Store. 
All right. And then we also have a face filters option as well. And whichever ones you download, you can find in the my filters section there. And then just below the filter, you have this little dial here that lets you control the intensity. All right. So really good stuff, really good stuff indeed. So if we go white and black and I turn the dial back, you can see we got color. Or if I want it full white and black, boom, full white and black. But I am not a fan of filters. I prefer to use the original footage unedited. So y'all know I got to keep it in original. All right. And then we're going to hit back to get out of that. But that goes over all of your settings and features across the top with filters being the last one and the sub settings being the first one. Okay. Then directly below that, we got our main composition window. And just below that, we have our quick shortcuts to switch between the different cameras. So you can see the double tree is the main camera, the 12 megapixel camera, and the triple tree is the ultra wide 16 megapixel camera. And check out the difference in field of view here. So I've been sitting in the same spot this whole time. Check it out. Ultra wide, primary, primary, ultra wide. Really good stuff, really good stuff indeed. And then you can see as you pinch to zoom or as you switch, you do get quick little toggles to jump in between the different zooms. All right. So good stuff there. Good stuff there indeed. I like how Samsung did that. Quick little toggles to switch you in between the zooms. So that's how you would switch between your ultra wide and your primary. And you can also do pinch to zoom as well. So if we pinch in, it zooms in. If we pinch out, we zoom out. And you can also program your volume rockers to take photos, take videos, or zoom in and out. Okay? So those are the trees that you see just below your viewfinder. Then right next to that, we got um, a scene optimizer. So it scans the scene and it optimizes the cameras for what it sees. Now we could turn that off just by tapping on it. And you can see scene optimizer disabled. Turn it back on by tapping on it again. And you can see scene optimizer enabled. And it scans the scene and pops up what it thinks it is. And then it optimizes the cameras for the scene that it detects. All right. Good stuff there, good stuff indeed. So that goes over the main composition window and the shortcuts that are on it and turning off and on your scene optimizer from the main camera interface. Now, directly right below that, we got our main camera modes, all right? So we got photo mode, we got pro mode, okay? Then we have night mode, then we have live focus mode, which is Samsung's version of portrait mode. All right. Then we have pro video. Okay. And what's really nice about what's really nice about pro video is you can use the audio from the onboard mics and you can adjust it. You can use the audio from the headphone jack and you can adjust it. Or you can use the audio from your Bluetooth pair of connected earphones and you can adjust it so really really nice samsung really thought of everything with their pro mode video all right so not only do you got a variety of controls for your iso your white balance your shutter speed your focus so on and so forth and you got your guided uh focus line and you got your audio meter right on the screen you can also turn on a uh, histograph here so you can see what the focus meter and ranges are looking like. And you also got your mic controls as well. So you can control just about everything with the pro mode. And what's really nice as well is that it tells you what resolution and what frames per second you're recording at in the pro mode. You can go in and change that in the sub settings as well. So in terms of pro mode video, Samsung has thought of just about everything all they're missing is the live histogram. And when I say live, LG does one where it turns green over what you have in focus. That's how you could tell if it's in focus or not. But this one that Samsung has gives you a little graph that tells you when it's in focus. 
I would have preferred the live histogram that turns green. You know, it's a little bit of a better indicator for me, but it is what it is. So that's your pro mode video. Then we got the live focus video, which is basically like portrait mode video. And you can do this with the front or the rear facing camera. So that is really, really sweet. We got regular video, okay, which comes with uh, steady, okay. So this gives you like super smooth video here, super duper smooth. Okay. Now when you turn on super steady, it locks it to 30 frames per second and it locks the focus to fix focus. Okay. So that's that. And then right next to that we've got our regular slow motion and this one goes up to 240 frames per second. Okay. Then right next to that, we got our super slow motion and this one goes up to 960 frames per second. Okay. And you need absolutely good lighting to use this. All right. Then we got single shot. Okay. So you tap on single shot. It's going to take a variety of different shots and give you the best one. And then right here, we got more and you can see the other modes that are available. So Bigsby vision, AR vision, panorama mode, food mode, and hyperlapse. Okay. And then you can drag and drop the different modes. So if you hold, you drag it down and drop it, and then it's on there, and then you can rearrange the modes the way you want them to be. Okay? So in all honesty, I just have these on here for the video, but I don't use food mode anymore, and I don't use single take. Boom. And in all honesty, I don't really use slow motion either. It's a nice feature, but it's not something that I use. So take off super slow, take off regular slow, and we just rocking with these right here. Okay. Regular photo, pro mode, pro mode video, night mode, uh, live focus video, and live focus or portrait mode. These are all the modes that I use. And let me put this in the proper order here. Okay, so I would have to slide this around here and then slide that around there till I get the modes that I want where I want them to be. So put this one here, put that one there, boom. So pro mode and we are actually gonna do, uh, where is it at? Just like that. Good to go. All right. So now I have it set up exactly how I want it. Boom. All right. So that goes over all the modes and how you can rearrange them. Okay. And then just below your modes, you got a quick access button to your shutter button. When in photos, you got a quick access mode to your video button when in videos. Okay. Same thing applied for the other modes as well. Then to the left of that, we got a quick shortcut to our gallery. And then to the right of that, we got a quick shortcut to switch to our front facing 10 megapixel camera. And what's really nice here is aside from a few um, different features, we got access to all the different modes on the front cameras as we do on the there, all except for uh, pro mode. And I do believe pro video mode. All right. So you can see those switch to the, um, rear facing camera. So we can't use pro mode for the front facing camera. Okay. And we can't use pro mode video for the front facing camera either. Anywhere you can use the front facing camera, you will see the front facing camera toggle pop up. Okay. So that's that. And again, the front facing camera is a 10 megapixel camera. All right. And what's neat about the front facing camera is they got a crop on the lens. So you can crop it out just a little bit more to get more in the frame. So maybe if you're taking a group selfie, okay, you put it on wide, it will crop out just a little bit so you can fit more people. You know, if you're popular and you got people to take photos with. 
I'm not popular. It is what it is. Alright? So that's that. And that pretty much goes over the front facing cameras. Now, let's get into the sub settings here. Alright? And actually, we'll get more access if we use the rear facing camera. Alright? So let's get into some more features and dive into the sub settings. Now, when you're in the sub settings, you can control a variety of different things and you can change a few different things. So you could turn off and on your scene optimizer. You could turn off and on suggested shot and guideline help. You could turn off and on your QR code scanner because there is one built directly into the camera software. So that's really, really cool. So as soon as it detects QR codes or any type of text, it will automatically frame it for scanning. So really, really good stuff there. And then we got what the shutter button does. So uh, press and hold would do a burst shot. And then also if you switch it, you can do a GIF creator or GIF creator. Then we have formatting options. So raw support, uh, H.265 support, okay? Ultra wide lens correction, and there is selfie lens correction when you're in the selfie camera as well. So that's that for the advanced uh, format and advanced options. And then we got the group selfies. That's for the front facing camera. We got the selfie preview with flipping. So we'll, it will flip it to the proper orientation if you would like. Then we got the beauty modes and skin tones. I just leave it on original because I don't like any type of beauty mode, skinning, or effects. So I leave it on original. I try to get it as close to realistic as possible. Okay? And that goes over all the photo stuff here. Alright. Now, let's get into the video stuff. Okay? Now, for the video, we can do 720p through true 4k 60 all right and you can see if you shoot in full frame so the full 20 by 9 aspect ratio that's 1080p 30 fps and that's hd plus okay if you shoot in the one by one square that's a little bit over 1080p and that's 30 fps but if you want to take full advantage of all the resolutions you have to shoot in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio so you can see 720p 1080p 30 1080p 60 uh, 4k 30 fps and 4k 60 fps now you can use the ultra wide camera on all of the modes except for 1080p 60 right let me show you so if i set it to 1080p 60 you can see we lose some features here and it tells you what we're losing so we're losing autofocus and we're losing object tracking support, okay, at the selected resolution, which is 1080p 60. But if I back out, you can see we do lose the ultra wide camera for video. So jumping into video, no ultra wide camera here in 1080p 60 FPS. But you can see if I jump back in, okay. And we take it off of 1080p 60. So we go somewhere like 4K. And come out. Go back to video. Now I got my ultra wide. And I got my primary. Okay. So for, for some strange reason. Samsung disabled the ultra wide cameras. In any of the 60 FPS video modes. Okay. And again, if you use Super Steady, you're cut down to 1080p, 30fps. Okay? So it's kind of strange they did that, but it is what it is. So you can see we got up to 4K, 60fps with the primary camera. And again, if we do 60fps, we do lose some features. And it tells you what it is. So we lose the object tracking, we lose the autofocus, and we lose the electronic image stabilization at 4K 60 FPS. And I tried 4K 30 FPS, but let's see if we lose the ultra wide camera as well. 
yep, we do lose the ultra wide camera as well at 4K 60. So at 1080p 60, no ultra wide camera. At 4K 60, no ultra wide camera. But 4K 30, you're good. 1080p 30, you're good. 720p 30, you're good. All right, so good stuff there. And I was very happy to see this. So no camera gymnastics needed for this device. But with the front facing camera, we got all of the same resolutions as the rear facing camera. So 720p, 1080p, 1080p 60, 4K 30, and 4K 60 with the 10 megapixel front facing camera. Beautiful thing to see, beautiful thing indeed. All right, and again, depending on the resolution that you shoot at, you lose certain features. Okay, just so you can see. So really, if you want access to the most features, you want to be shooting in 1080p 30, 4K 30, or 720p 30. Okay, and depending on the different ratios you want to shoot at, you got your different resolutions. So full frame is HD plus at 30 FPS. And then one by one square is again a little bit over HD at 30 FPS. All right. And what's also really sweet here, let me set this how, let me set this to how I'm actually going to be using it. But what's also sweet here is we do have controls for our pro mode resolutions. All right. So you can do 16 by 9 all the way up to 4K 60 FPS. And you can do 21 by 9. Okay. All the way up to 4K 60 FPS. So you can shoot 4K 60 FPS at the full resolution for the display at the full ratio for the display. Now if you want to do 18 by 9 or full frame, it's going to be 1080p 30 FPS or 1080p plus 30 FPS. Now, also in pro mode, you got access to the full HDR 10 plus support. Okay. So really good stuff there. And you have that support in 16 by 9 or 21 by 9. Okay. And that's for pro mode video. Really good stuff there. So not only do you have full controls over all of the things for pro mode, but you got full controls over the video, the video resolutions and all that good stuff for your pro mode. My bad, y'all. You know I can't talk sometimes. And you know I'm super excited back here. All right. So that's the pro mode settings. And then we got our advanced options as well for the video. And again, we got our different saving codecs. So 8.264 and 8.265. Again, if you do 8.264, you are pretty much covered in terms of compatibility. If you do 8.265, you may or may not have full compatibility, meaning you may lose your audio if it gets played back on devices that don't support 8.265 but the up upside to 8.265 the upside to 8.265 is it's a more compressed file format so it takes up less space and then as i said earlier we do have true hdr 10 plus video support so if you toggle this on it's going to let you shoot in full h uh, in full hdr 10 plus uh, supported codecs so you get the full range of colors for the HDR 10 plus okay if you turn that on now I don't tend to use that because sometimes you may have to go in and do some heavy post editing to get the colors right and if you try to use that footage directly out of the camera it may sometimes get messed up during the upload okay so it does look good if you're willing to edit but it can potentially mess up the footage sometimes. That's why I don't use the HDR10+, Plus, but it is there if you want to use it. Okay. Then moving on down here, we got our HDR support. So similar to your older galaxies, you can tell the software to use it as needed. Or you can tell it to always apply it. Or you could turn it off altogether if you don't like HDR. Okay. I do like HDR and I do like to let the software the software decide so that's how I have it set. Now that's for photos and for videos. 
Then we got the object tracking. Okay. So with an object in the field of view of the camera, you tap on that object and it will try to keep it in focus. Then we got our grid lines. Okay. And no square or anything like that. We just got our three by three grid or none. So you can see it's a toggle there. Then we got our location tags or our location metadata as I like to call it. And I always recommend that you turn this off because anyone with a little bit of technical know-how can get access to your location based on the photos or videos that you post if you leave the location tags turned on. But an upside to leaving the location tags turned on is that it does optimize your gallery based on your location if you leave your location tags turned on. But for me, it's kind of a privacy thing. So I turn this option off and I would encourage everybody to do the same thing. The only time you really want their device to have access to your location is in the times when you need to use your GPS. Other than that, you need to control when the device has access to that information. So you do that by checking the option that says use GPS when needed or use GPS while the app is in use or you toggle off and on the GPS for yourself. So I always recommend that you turn off the location tags or IE the location metadata, okay? Then we have our shooting modes here, our shooting methods, and this is where you can control what the volume rockers do. So take photos or start videos, zoom in and out, or control the volume. We can do our voice commands. We can add a floating shutter button. We could add a palm swipe to take selfies or holding up your palm to take selfies, okay? And then we can do some keep settings here. So you can keep the camera in the last mode that you are in, okay? You can set a specific style for the selfies and keep that as your normal selfie style. And you can set specific filters and the device will remember it and always use those filters. So we got a variety of different customizations and options that you can use on your Samsung Galaxy S10e. Okay, so that should keep options. And then you got our quick launch controls here. So the double press of the power button that's also doubles as your fingerprint scanner right there. Shutter sound, quick preview. Uh, haptic feedback when you push buttons. So when you take a photo, it will give you haptic feedback through the volume rockers or give you haptic feedback through the on-screen button. Now I like that because with that turned on, it lets me know when the picture is actually taken. So I get that visual effect, but I also get the haptic feedback. So I get the physical feel as well. So I would recommend you turn on the haptic feedback when you're taking your photos or recording video. It just helps all the additional uh, cues help when producing the best video possible. So I would recommend y'all turn that on. Then we got a factory camera reset option there. So factory reset the camera options. And then we got the about cameras. So this tells you your current camera software, okay? And as you can see, the camera software on the S10e, I think it's a few gens behind but it is on 11.0.01.020, okay? So that's the camera software that the S10e is currently running. Now I do believe they're up to like software version 11.03 or 11.04 as of the recording of this video, which is April 24th or 23rd, 23rd, my bad. Okay, and this goes over all the sub settings in the camera on your Samsung Galaxy S10e. All right, y'all. So I do believe we covered everything that you need to know. Now, if I missed anything or if I was unclear on anything, please leave your questions down below in the comments. I do try to answer all questions in a timely fashion. Okay, and as always, Keep it respectful, please. All right? Please try to only have conversations about what the video is about. We don't really need any rude or residuous comments down below in the comment section. Keep it respectful, please. If you're not respectful in the comments, you will force me to take 
action. Okay? Keep it respectful, please. I don't want to have to hide comments. I don't want to have to block people's comments. We should be able to have a nice, respectful conversation about the videos that are up on YouTube down below in the comment section. So keep it respectful, please. Okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and cut in the photo samples. And I'm going to go ahead and cut in the video samples as well. And there might be a little bit more photo samples than usual because I had a lot of fun with the ultra wide camera. Okay, so when applicable, I use the normal camera, primary camera, and or the selfie camera, and I also use the ultra wide camera. So pretty much for all the primary shots, you're going to see a primary shot and an ultra wide shot. And then for the selfies, you're going to see a front facing selfie and a rear facing selfie whenever I feel that it was appropriate to do so. All right. So now we're going to cut in all the photo and the video samples, and then I'm going to come back at the end of the video and give y'all my closing thoughts about these cameras. Enjoy y'all, and I will see you guys on the other side. Cue that music up. Let's go.
we are back in. And now we're gonna start our camera testing on the rear and front facing cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S10e, all right? This is gonna be a little bit different than the more extensive camera test that I do. It's still gonna be quite extensive and long, but we're only gonna focus on a few particular things. So we're gonna focus on the front facing camera, we're gonna focus on the primary rear facing camera, and the ultra wide camera, all right? And it's gonna be primarily recorded in auto mode, all right? Other than that, all of these video clips are gonna be recorded in 1080p, 1080p 60, and 4K 30 FPS, all right? Now, my video editor maxes out at a recording rendering resolution of 2K at 30 FPS, all right? Even though I can turn on experimental mode and bump it up to 4K and 60 FPS, I'm just gonna be upscaling this, or downscaling it rather, cause we are gonna record in 4K, to 2K at 30 FPS, all right? So once again, we're gonna be recording at 1080p 30, 1080p 60, and 4K 30 FPS. We are gonna be using the onboard microphones on the device, and we're gonna be focusing on the front facing camera, the rear facing primary 12 megapixel camera, and the rear facing ultra wide camera. All right? So starting off the test here, we're testing out the front facing 10 megapixel camera on the S10e. This is recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up, and we are outdoors in daytime good lighting. All right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spin the cameras around and we're gonna test out the ultra wide camera first. Then it's gonna be followed by the primary 12 megapixel camera. All of this is gonna be recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS, all right? So I'll be right back with the rest of the testing for y'all. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, y'all, so starting off here, we're testing out the ultra wide 16 megapixel camera on the S10e. This is being recorded in 1080p, 30 FPS, with no external microphone hooked up. All right, so we're gonna do our usual testing, the usual pans, the usual exposure testing, so on and so forth. And we're gonna wrap it up with the zoom testing if we can. All right, so let's start off with the pans here. So we're gonna pan from here all the way through to right about there and come on back, all right? And what's neat about the S10e is that we do have OIS as well as EIS. So this footage should be nice and stable, but y'all let me know, so that's one. Come on back. Here we go with number two. All right, come on back. And last one. And come on back. All right, now let's go into the exposure testing. So let's center up. We're lined up on the tree and we're gonna pan down to the ground and see how it does. Now when we test the exposure, we want a nice smooth transition from the lighter areas to the darker areas with minimal exposure blowout. And if the camera does blow out, we want it to recover as quickly and as evenly as possible. So let's see how these ultra wide cameras do. Let's go. So on the tree, and we're gonna pan down. Boom. Going back up. That's one. Man, that looked good. Here we go with number two. Down. And up. Okay, that's two. One more time. Down. And up. Okay, that's three. Now let's test out the focus. Now what's really nice here 
and I'm happy to see that Samsung has done this, but they have implemented focus features into their ultra wide camera as well. So similar to what LG does, LG was actually a pioneer of this feature. We do have full focus controls on the ultra wide. So we got tap to focus as well as continuous autofocus. So really, really good stuff overall. Now we're gonna test out both. We're gonna start off with the autofocus first and we're gonna use our typical three focal subjects. So the bushes to the left, okay? The big tree in the center, right? And then the pillar off to my right, okay? And we're gonna do each two times. So you ready? Here we go. Bushes to the left. How does that look? Tree in the center. How does that look? And pillar off to my right. How does that look? That's number one. One more time. Bushes to the left. Tree to the center. Okay. Pillar to the right. All right. Now let me readjust my grip. Sorry, y'all, for the shake. And let's do the tap to focus, same three subjects. Here we go, bushes, tap, locked up. Man, that was almost instant. Tree to the center, tap, locked up. Again, almost instant. And pillar off to the right, tap, locked up. Again, almost instant. Let's do it one more time. Bushes, tap, locked up, tree, tap, locked up, and then pillar off to my right, tap, locked up. Really quick overall focus in my opinion. And then along with that focus, we can lock the focus, we can lock the exposure, we can dial in the exposure so we can overexpose, we can underexpose, or we can dial it in perfectly for the scene. So right about there is perfect. And now the focus is locked, the exposure is locked, so on and so forth. And this is all with the ultra wide camera, okay? And then if I wanna set it back to auto, I just tap out of my focus point and now it's back to auto focus, auto exposure. All with the ultra wide camera. Finally, Samsung, finally, y'all caught up to LG. So even though I'm very sad to see LG exit the smartphone game, at least we got another manufacturer to pick up the slack and keep pushing forward. You're going to be missed, LG. Let me give y'all a moment of silence. Going to miss y'all. Hope you come back. But let's keep the testing going. All right. So now we're going to round out the testing with the zoom test. Now, I think it's going to transition to the primary camera when I start zooming, but let's find out. Is that a B? That is a B. I'm about to start running, y'all. You just don't know. I don't want to get stung. I do not. Oh, boy, you better go over that way. All right. All right. He's minding his own business. I will run away and fall and hurt myself. I'm, I'm allergic. I'm not messing with that. Anyways, let's get into the focus testing and let's do it quickly because I don't want to get stung by this bad boy over here. So this is in the ultra wide camera mode here with no zoom. And now you can program the volume rockers to zoom in or you can use pinch to zoom. So we can pinch to zoom all the way up to eight times here. Or you can use your volume rockers to zoom in anywhere from the ultra wide all the way through to the primary all the way up to eight times. If you want to just keep pressing and holding, boom, all the way up to eight times there, boom. And what's really neat is you also get these quick shortcuts that pop up on the side. So you got 0.5 times, which is your ultra wide. You got one times, which is your primary. You got two times. We got four times, and then we can go all the way up to eight times. So they got all the shortcuts. So you can do it manually with the volume rocker. You can pinch the zoom, or you can use the shortcuts. All right? And honestly, y'all, you know what I'm going to say. 
2.5 times zoom is your best friend. So if you're going to zoom in, I would say no more than this. I mean, look at that. The colors are excellent. The stabilization is almost perfect. It's a little shaky. That is awesome. Okay? And this is 2.5 times zoom. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Let me give y'all the real test. So let's zoom out. Boom. So this is at 1.5 times. Okay? Let's go ahead and lock focus on the tree. And we'll lock exposure on the tree. And again, 1.5 times. Okay? Then we're going to switch down to the main camera. This is the main camera at 1 times. Then we're going to go up to 2 times. Right here. So we're further in on the main camera at 2 times right here. Okay? Then we're at 4 times right there. And then here's 8 times. So you can see... Eight times, it looks severely degraded. You can see the colors are kind of washed out. And it's a little bit shaky. So all the precise movements add a little judder to the camera. So this is why I say you definitely don't want to zoom in all the way. But I got to say, Samsung did a great job with their camera interface as we zoom all the way back out. As not only do they give you the pinch to zoom, they give you the volume rocker controls, but they also give you all the shortcuts in between. So again, 1.5 times, 1 times, uh, 2 times, 4 times, and 8 times zoom. And in all honesty, you want to stick anywhere between the 2 times to 2.5 times if you're going to be zooming. Okay? So this pretty much does it, testing out pretty much the cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S10e because we did transition between the ultra wide and the primary and again I'm very happy to see that Samsung much like LG gives you the ability now to switch between the primary and the ultra wide cameras all in one continuous video again LG was the pioneer of this feature and as they leave the mobile phone space I'm happy to see that Samsung has picked up the slack. So once again, LG, sad to see y'all go. Hope y'all come back one day, but at least Samsung is picking up the slack. All right, so this finishes up the testing on the front and rear-facing cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. Once again, this was recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. All right? So y'all let me know what y'all think of this. And just to close it out proper, let's spin the cameras around real quick. Give y'all a vlog style clip with the ultra wide. So spin it around, bam. And now we're vlogging with the ultra wide 16 megapixel camera. All right, all in one continuous clip. All right, let me know what y'all think. Okay, now let's go ahead and run inside and test out these cameras again. Indoors, daytime, low light. Let's go. I'll be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. Peace. Boy, that bee stayed over there. I'm a happy man. All right, be right back. All right, everyone. And now we're testing out the front and the rear-facing cameras on the S10e. And this is indoors, daytime, low light, okay? With no external microphone hooked up. And this video is being recorded in 1080p, 30fps. So starting off here, we're testing out the front-facing 10 megapixel camera. Nice stationary vlog style clip here. Let me know what y'all think. And if I'm being 100% honest, this looks Really, <laughs> this looks really good. I, I can't even lie. I can't even lie. This looks really good. All right, let me know what y'all think. Now let's go ahead and spin the cameras around, do some verification, and jump into the testing of the ultra wide and primary cameras in the same lighting scenario. I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. Peace. 
All right, y'all, so now we're testing out the ultra wide and primary cameras, rear facing cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. This is being recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. And this is indoors, daytime, low light testing. And we're starting off with the ultra wide cameras here. All right, so let's pan over and verify so y'all can see that there's no other lights in the room that are turned on today. So you can see as we focus on the window, the rest of the room gets dark. And if I pan over here, it's pretty dark in here. All right, so this is indeed an indoor daytime low light test. All right, now let's pan everything back over and let's angle everything up in a traditional reviewer style angle here. Let's go. And then we'll start the testing so that that looks straight. Let's angle it down. That looks good. And let's, oh, that's a little too far down. Hold on. There we go. And now let's tighten it up. All right. There we go. Got that angle. And let's bring it forward just a little bit. And now y'all can see it, baby. Let me slide forward a little bit. So this is what the ultra wide cameras look like. So y'all can see everything on my desk. Y'all can see everything on top of my desk here. So wireless charger, phone stand, got my remote here, got some more phone stands over here. Y'all can see what we have here. So mouse, keyboard, you can get a sense of everything and more importantly, just the spacing when you use the ultra wide cameras and check out the detail here. Let me hold up the keyboard, check out the detail on the keys. So how sharp is that? How legible is that? Let me know down below what y'all think, how the colors look, how does the focus look? Let me know. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Indeed. And now let's do some focus testing with the ultra wide. Then we'll bang it down to the primary and do the same focus testing again. So you can see right now it's focused up on the keyboard. Let's bring in the S7 Active as another focal subject and see how it does with locking the focus on the ultra wide cameras. Here we go. Boom. Check that out. A little bit of a struggle on the focus there. Looks like it needs a little bit of assistance. Yeah, let's try helping it out. Yeah, so the focus on the ultra wide is definitely not as good as the focus on the primary. Let's take it out. Let's see how quickly it locks back up on the keyboard. Okay, so rel relatively fast to lock back up on the keyboard. Let's try one more time. Locking up on the phone here. Yeah, definitely not as sharp. But still, the colors look good. Let's try to take it out, see how fast it locks back up on the keyboard. Boom. All right, good stuff. Good stuff indeed. Now, let's switch down to the primary. Boom. And now we got to readjust the angle here just a little bit. And so now we're on the primary. Okay? Check that out. Once again, take a look at the difference in the field of view. So primary, ultra wide, okay? Check out the difference there. See this? This is the ultra wide. Go to the primary, that's the primary. You see the big difference in the field of view? Good stuff, good stuff indeed. So now, what do y'all think of the detail, the sharpness, and the color representation on the primary camera? How does that look? How does the text look? How legible is that? Man, it actually looks really, really good right now. I can't even lie. That looks really good right now. It's overexposing a little bit because the, the light is kind of unbalanced. So you can see the right side of the picture is a little bit overexposed as opposed to the left side. But that still looks really, really good. And it's more than usable 
in my opinion. So now let's do a quick focusing test here. Let's go. So bringing back in the S7 Active, let's see how quickly it locks up focus. Bam! Now that is what I'm talking about. Crisp, nice, more than legible. Look at the fine detail in the pattern here. Man, look at that nice shallow depth of field going on around the sides or that nice little bokeh blur going on around the sides. Look at how sharp that text is down there on the phone. Wowie! Yes, now let's see how long it takes to lock up focus back on the keyboard. Three, two, one, taking it out. Boom, and we're back. It's nothing. We're back. Okay, let's see how long it takes to lock back on. Bring the phone back in. Boom. Bam, baby. So focusing speeds are fast. Detail is fast. And the nice, the color representation between the ultra wide and the primary is really, really close. So I like that, man. Samsung, apparently, it looks like they did a great job with these cameras, man. Great job indeed. One last focusing test before we do one more test to get up out of here. So taking the phone out. Bam! And we're back up on the keyboard. Man, it's nothing. It's nothing. All right, it's nothing. All right. Now, one last test I want to do is let's angle this back up to how we had it before. All right. And we're going to adjust it back to the ultra wide. Boom. And we're going to spin it around to give y'all a vlog style test. Okay, so let's spin this. All right, let's level it up. And now let me back up a little bit. I don't even know what it look like in the camera. All right, this should be a good distance because we're on the ultra wide. So now y'all are getting a nice vlog style test with the ultra wide cameras, right? So we tested the primary, we tested the ultra wide, and then I'm finishing up this video clip here with a vlog style test on the ultra wide, all right? Let me know what y'all think, man. How did these cameras do in this indoor daytime low light scenario? All right, let me know. How's the video? How's the audio? How's the overall stabilization? Let me know down below. Now, we're going to redo similar testing in the next test. It's going to be nighttime artificial lighting again at 1080p with the front and the rear facing cameras. So I'll be right back with that next set of tests for you guys and gals. I'll see y'all in a little bit. Peace, LOL. Are those crutches behind me? Whose stoppers need to get fixed? I think so. <laughs> it is what it is. All right, y'all, so here we are. We're back again, testing out the rear and the front camera on the S10e. Okay, the Samsung Galaxy S10e. All right, so starting off here, we got a nighttime artificial lighting vlog style test with the front facing 10 megapixel camera. And this is being recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. Okay, so lot, yeah, good. So y'all let me know what you think of this one. All right, and now. Let's go ahead and spin the cameras around and test out the ultra wide and primary cameras on the S10e in the same lighting scenario. So I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone. So we got the camera spun around here and we're starting off testing out the ultra wide 16 megapixel camera. And then we'll transition into testing out the primary 12 megapixel camera on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. This is being recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. And this is nighttime artificial lighting testing, okay? So let me just verify for everyone. If we pan over, y'all can see there's no external light coming in through the window here. And the only light source we have is my overhead artificial smart studio light here. And I am going to get some more of those 
So this will eventually become a fully lit scene here as opposed to just being lit up by one light bulb. But this is indeed nighttime artificial lighting settings here. Just wanted to verify that for everyone. Now let's go ahead and straighten this up. And let's angle everything up into the traditional reviewer style approach. Let's go. So that looks straight and let's angle down. And that looks good, let's tighten up. Okay, good stuff. All right, and we are good to go here. So here y'all can see and pay special attention to the field of view. Once again, this is with the ultra wide 16 megapixel camera on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. And what I really like about these cameras on this device is everything that you can do with the primary 12 megapixel camera, you can do with the 16 megapixel ultra wide. So uh, continuous autofocus, tap to focus, uh, focus controls, uh, uh, auto exposure or manual exposure, you can do it all with the ultra wide. All right, and you have a seamless transition between ultra wide and primary. Let me show you. So this is the ultra wide and one tap and we're on the primary and one tap again and we're back on the ultra wide. So very reminiscent as to what LG does on their devices. Now we're seeing it implemented on other devices as well. And this particular implementation is how Samsung feels it should be done. But again, this was first pioneered by LG and their G lineup and their V lineup of devices. All right. So Samsung didn't do this. Okay. Samsung didn't invent this. LG is the pioneer of all that technology that I just told you guys and gals about. Yeah. Now. Let's get into the testing here. Let's do this. So let's check out the detail retention in this artificial lighting scenario. So let me hold up my keyboard. How clear is that? How legible is the text? And this is where in these lower light scenarios, you can really see the difference in quality and color science when you have multiple cameras on your device. In particular, you can really see the difference in quality and colors when you have an ultra wide versus a primary. So what do y'all think? How legible is that? Okay. Okay. Now let's do some quick focus testing. So let me pick up the S7 Active here. Okay. Let me hold this up. Again, how legible is that? Now here you can see it's definitely struggling to focus. It's definitely kind of overexposed and blown out. So definitely, definitely, when you get into lower light scenarios, you definitely might, might want to think about adding more light or just switching down to the primary camera because you see it's not focusing real good at all on that text. See? So the ultra-wide cameras are definitely struggling in these lower light scenarios. Now let's go ahead and switch down to the primaries and redo the test. So let me one click, boom, and now we're on the primary. And again, pay special attention to the changes in the field of view, okay? So you notice we got much less in the field of view for the cameras now, so I kinda gotta readjust it a little bit just to make it look similar to the ultra wide. So right about there looking pretty much similar, just a little bit zoomed in. And now we're using the primary 12 megapixel camera. So let's redo this testing again, holding up the keyboard here. Again, how legible and how much detail are you getting off the keyboard? How legible is that text? How's it doing with the lighting and the color science? Let me know. Now the text is looking good. Eh? What you think? What do you think? Hmm? Mm-hmm. 
All right, now let's do some focus testing here and we'll wrap this video up. So bringing in the S7 Active, let's try and get to lock focus on that text. Again, how legible is that text? Can you read it? How's it doing? Look at that nice shallow depth of field blur going on in the background. Oh yes, this is definitely legible. Look at the nice gradient stipple pattern on the back of the device. Looking good, looking real good here. Okay, now let's check focusing speeds. So let's take the device out and see how fast it locks back up on the keyboard behind it. Ready, three, two, one. Boom, almost instant. Really fast focusing speeds, even in this lower light scenario with the primary camera and really good detail retention as well. Let's do it one more time. So let's bring the phone back in. How fast did it lock back up on that focus? Again, how clear or legible is that text? Look at that shallow depth of field going on behind us. Now again, that's all natural, all right? We are not in uh, live focus video mode. That's all natural coming from the focus lock on the cameras. Now, let's take it out and again, see how fast it takes to lock back up on the keyboard. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Boom. And we're locked back up on the keyboard. And honestly, guys and gals, I got to tell y'all, okay, this looks great. All right. Honestly, I feel like these cameras are going to serve me well on the S10e for a long time to come. Long time, baby. Long time. <laughs> um, Like in the Independence Day two movie long time baby long time all right so these cameras are doing a great job and i have to say even the ultra wide in really good lighting conditions does a great job all right now last but certainly not least i want to close out the video as i've been doing with the other video tests so i want to just wrap everything up with the ultra wide vlog style test so let's angle this back up here okay and we'll angle it back up to how it was. And then we'll switch to the ultra wide again. Boom. And now I just want to spin everything around. All right. Boom. Hey, okay, and let me back up a little bit. All right. So now I should be nice and in the frame. I can't really see it. But here we're going to close out this 1080p. Nighttime artificial lighting test with the vlog style clip on the ultra wide cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. Again, let me know what y'all think of the audio. Let me know what you think of the overall video quality. Let me know what you think of the overall stabilization down below. As always, your feedback is greatly appreciated. All right. Now, as we continue on with the testing here. We're going to test out, the next test we're going to do is 1080p60. And as I said before, we're going to wrap everything up with uh, 4K30. Now, my editing application maxes out at a rendering of 2K30 FPS. So, it'll be rendered in 2K even though it was shot in 4K. Okay? So, y'all let me know what you think there. And again, what I really, really like about the S10e even though I'll probably never use it aside from testing, is the fact that we can record in 4K, 30 and 60, with the front and the rear facing cameras, whether it is primary 12 or secondary 16 megapixel ultra wide, we got 4K, 30 and 60, we got uh, 1080p, 30 and 60. So pretty much anything that you could do with one set of cameras on this device, you can do with the other set of cameras on this device. So the sky's the limit and your imagination is the limit in terms of what type of content you can create with this device. All right. So I'm really, really happy to see that even though in all honesty, I will probably never take this bad boy out of third gear, so to speak, 
So we will probably never shoot higher than 1080p at 60 FPS. And if we do, we'll probably downsample it to 720p or just regular 1080p 30, okay? It's just, in my opinion, those lower resolutions still offer good quality while also maintaining a smaller file size. When you shoot in higher resolutions, the files get outrageous, okay? Okay, it just is what it is. But for the purposes of testing, I'm going to show you guys everything that I feel is important to know. Am I going to show you everything? No, but you should get a really good overall understanding of where everything is and how everything works. And then you take it and you run with it for yourself. All right? So once again, this concludes the 1080p 30fps testing with the Samsung Galaxy S10e. All right? Okay, let's move on to some more testing now. I'll see you guys in the next clip. We'll be right back. Peace. All right, y'all. And now we're back in with some more testing of the secondary and the primary cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. Now we're out here in shooting space number two. We're out here by the pool. And here we have a front-facing 10 megapixel camera test of the S10e. This is being recorded in 1080p at 60 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So y'all let me know what you think of this real quick vlog style clip here on the S10e and its front facing camera. All right, this actually looks pretty good. Skin tone looking good, detail is looking good. Now if you look behind me, it's blowing out the background behind me, but it's keeping me the subject in focus and it's keeping all that detail, all right? Yeah, it is blowing out the background pretty badly. But other than that, that background blowout, this is some pretty usable footage, okay? So let me know what y'all think. Now let's spin the cameras around and get into testing out the primary and the ultra wide cameras. All right, let's do this. I'll be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, y'all, and now we are back in, and now we're testing out the rear-facing cameras in 1080p at 60 FPS. Now, sadly, and it took me a little bit of digging to figure this out, but when you shoot in 1080p at 60 FPS, you can only use the primary 12 megapixel camera, all right? Because here I was digging through the settings, trying to get that ultra wide to pop back up. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is the primary sensor. And then when I changed it to 1080p and went full frame, then I got the ultra wide and the primary sensor. And then I'm like, wait a minute, let me put it back to 1080p 60. And then the ultra wide sensor disappeared again. So it looks like when you record in 1080p 60 FPS, you're only gonna be using the primary 12 megapixel camera here. Bomp, bomp, bomp. So kind of sad, but it is what it is. Let's get in with the testing nevertheless. All right? So let's start off with the pans. We're going to pan from here all the way through. To right about there. And come on back. We're going to do this twice. So that was one. Here we go with number two. All right. Boom. And come on back to the center. And now let's test the exposure. So we're going to pan up and down. And again, you're looking for that nice smooth transition from the lighter areas to the darker areas with minimal exposure blowout. Let's see how the cameras do. So we're up, let's pan down. Okay, going back up. One, we're gonna do this three times. Going down.
Coming back up. Two. Last one. Going down. Coming back up. Three. All right? So how was the exposure on that one? It looked, it looked pretty good to me through the viewfinder. Now let's test out the focus. So we got continuous autofocus and we got tap to focus here. And we do have exposure controls and focus locking and all that goodies. All right, so let's get our focal subjects. So we're gonna use the folding chair to the left. We're gonna use the big pool chair in the center. And we're gonna use the mango tree off to the right. All right, gonna do this twice. Then we're gonna switch to tap to focus. So y'all let me know how well you think the cameras do. How well do you think the cameras do in auto mode? Here we go. So fold and chair. What you think? Big pool chair. What you think? Mango tree. What you think? That's one. Going again. Fold and chair. What you think? Big pool chair. What you think? Mango tree. What you think? All right, let me adjust my grip here real quick. Sorry for the shaky cam productions. And let's do the tap to focus now. So once again, folding chair, tap, locked up. Big pool chair, tap, locked up. And then mango tree, tap, locked up. Really fast overall focus. Little minute adjustments in the exposure. Really good overall image in my opinion. Let's do it one more time. Fold in chair, tap, locked up, almost instant with it. Big pool chair, tap, locked up, okay? And then mango tree, tap, locked up. Really, really fast. Again, really nice overall image in my opinion. Now, let's wrap up the test by testing out the zoom. And one of the reasons why I test the zoom is because it tests everything. It tests the detail, it tests the image retention, it tests the stabilization, it tests everything. All right, so let's go. Let's lock up on the roof, on the house there, and let's get to zooming in. So we're gonna zoom in to 1.5 times. Right there, 1.5 times zoom. And man, does that look good. That looks real good. All right, let's keep it going now. Let's go up to 2.5. Yeah, that looks good too. And the stabilization is really good, all right? But I would expect nothing less with OIS and EIS on board. All right, let's go up to five. All right, I'm trying to get it exact and I'm kind of messing up. Okay, five times zoom right there. My bad, y'all. What do you think? You know, aside from the colors being washed out, we lose a little bit of detail but the stabilization is still pretty good. What do you think? Let's max it out now. Eight times zoom. Okay, now you should notice a really big detail loss. Okay, look how washed out those colors are. We got super shaky here, so I gotta try and keep it super steady. This is why I don't recommend eight times zoom. You see it? Let's take it to two times zoom. This is what I recommend right here. Two times zoom right here. Or 2.5 right there. Okay? And man, I really do like these shortcuts that pop up. So one times, two times, oh, disappeared too quick. Four times, eight times. Four times, two times, one times. I like how... Samsung put in those little shortcuts to make it easy and convenient. So you can go through it, pinch the zoom, you can program your volume rockers, or you can use those shortcuts. Anyways, real quick camera test. 
with the primary 12 megapixel camera on the Samsung Galaxy S10e in 1080p at 60 FPS. Let me know what y'all think. Now, let's run inside and I'm going to give y'all some indoor daytime low light testing in 1080p at 60 FPS with the secondary 10 megapixel sensor and the primary 12 megapixel sensor. Sadly, can't use 1080p 60 FPS with the ultra wide. Kind of sad, but it is what it is. Yeah, let's keep it going now. I'll be back with some more tests. All right, everyone, and now here is the front facing 10 megapixel camera on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. This is being recorded indoors, daytime, low light, with no external microphone hooked up. And this is being recorded in 1080p at 60 FPS. All right, so y'all let me know what you think of this. Now, just to give y'all my thoughts, based on what I'm seeing through the viewfinder here, this actually looks really, really good. But I noticed that it's doing, uh, you know, it's having a really tough time with the exposure. You can see every so often the exposure is shifting. So it's definitely having a really tough time with the exposure. So what I would do is I would lock the focus on me and then I would dial in the exposure to where it needs to be. This way, it doesn't need to struggle. So now you should see this footage should look perfect, okay? Perfectly exposed for the background behind me, perfectly exposed for my skin tone, and we got some really good footage here, okay? Again, this is indoors, daytime, low light, with the front-facing 10 megapixel camera on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. All right, now let's spin the cameras around. And let's test out the primary 12 megapixel sensor in 1080p in the same lighting scenario. So give me one second. I'll be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone. Here we go now. Now we're using the primary 12 megapixel camera on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. Once again, this is being recorded indoors, daytime, low light, with no external microphone hooked up. And this is in 1080p at 30 f 30 60 fps my bad okay now let me give y'all some verifications and then we'll continue on with the testing here we go so if we pan over here y'all can indeed see that the only light source we're using is the light coming in through the window here and you can see when we pan away from the window the rest of the room is actually really really dark Okay, so this is indeed an indoor daytime low light test. Okay, let's pan back over and let's center everything up and let's put this bad boy into a traditional reviewer style angle here and do some testing here. So that looks straight. Let's pan it down. That looks good. Let me back up a little bit. All right. Boom, boom. And y'all can see, again, I showed y'all with the clip yesterday, but this is another telltale sign that we're not using the ultra wide camera. Look how much less we get in the field of view when we use the primary camera. Now, if I wanted to fix this, I would have to back way up. Let me show y'all, I would have to back way up to like right here, actually I gotta go a little bit further, to like right there, and now I can get everything in the frame. Okay, so y'all can see I gotta get way back to get that, all right? All right, and I actually gotta stretch way forward to reach the desk now in order to get this in the proper framing. But for y'all, I'll struggle a little bit. So now this is what the camera on the S10e looks like, the main 12 megapixel camera in 60 FPS, looks like indoors, daytime, low light. So let's do some detail testing, let's do some focus testing. Y'all let me know how you think it does here. So picking up the keyboard, how's the detail on the keys here? That actually looks really, really good. Okay, panning through. Yeah, that, that looks really, really good even though we don't have a lot of light to work with. Okay? Yep. 
I don't know what y'all think, but to me that looks really, really good. Now let's do the focus testing here. Okay, so we got the trusty, dusty S7 Active right here. Let's try to lock in on that text. Okay, how sharp is that? All right, what do y'all think? Again, this is 1080p, 60 FPS. How legible is that text? How good is the stipple pattern? All right, what do y'all think? Okay. Now, let's see how, how fast it takes or how quickly it can refocus back on the keyboard when we take the phone out. Ready? Three, two, one. Boom. And we're back on the keyboard. Again, almost instant. Even though we're here in a low light scenario, we got almost instant focusing. Man, the focusing speeds on the Samsung is really, really good. And the detail seems to be really, really good as well. One more time, let's do this focusing test. So bring the phone back in. See how long it takes to lock back on the text. Boom. It looks like it's in focus. And now let's see how quickly it takes to relock on the keyboard when we take the phone out. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Boom. And we're back on the keyboard. All right. So real quick, indoor daytime low light test with the front facing and primary cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. All right. Now we're going to wait till a little bit later on and we're going to redo the same test at nighttime with artificial lighting. All right. So I will see you guys in the next clip. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. All right, y'all. So now we are back in and we're testing out the front and the rear facing primary cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. And this is being recorded in nighttime artificial lighting settings here in 1080p at 60 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So starting off this testing here, we're just testing out the front facing 10 megapixel camera in 1080p at 60 FPS, a little stationary vlog style test here. And I gotta tell y'all, hoo hoo, it's like a breath of fresh air, man, to have 1080p 60 on the rear as well as the front facing camera because as I said in the unboxing of the S10e, we're actually still working on the review and coverage of the S8. So I'm kind of like taking these camera samples side by side, doing these camera tests back to back. And I, t I gotta tell y'all, it is super convenient to have 1080p 60 on the front as well as 1080p 60 on the rear, whereas we only got 1080p 60 on the rear on the S8. So really good stuff indeed, all right? Really good stuff indeed. But let me know what y'all think of this real quick front-facing camera sample test in nighttime artificial lighting here, okay? Again, 1080p, 60 FPS on the S10e. All right, let's now get to testing out the primary 12 megapixel camera in the same lighting scenario. Give me one second, I'll be right back. All right, y'all, so as promised now, we spun the cameras around, and now we're testing out the 12 megapixel primary camera on the Samsung Galaxy S10e, all right? This is also being recorded in nighttime in artificial lighting, okay, with no external microphone hooked up, and this is recorded in 1080p at 60 FPS. So let's do some quick verifications and jump straight into the testing. Let's not waste any time. So if we pan over here, y'all can indeed see it is pitch black outside. So this is indeed nighttime artificial lighting settings here, just so you can see. Okay. And now let's pan back over and straighten everything back up. Right about there. That's good. Right about there. Okay. Now let's angle everything down into the traditional reviewer style angle. Okay, so let's do this. Pan this down. And let's tighten it up. Okay. And 
let's put it in the right position because tightening it up kind of took it off balance. All right, so right here, that's it. Right there, that's it. So now y'all can see, pull this out the rest of the way. Boom, this is what these cameras look like in the traditional reviewer style angle. Once again, this is the rear facing primary 12 megapixel camera on the Samsung Galaxy S10e, and this is being recorded in 60 FPS, 1080p. All right, so let's check out the detail. Let's check out the sharpness of the text on the keyboard. Let me know what y'all think. And honestly, y'all, this is looking good, man. This is looking real good. Okay, let's pan through. What do y'all think here? It's looking real good. Real good indeed. Now, I gotta tell y'all, as I continue to test the S10e cameras, I'm really kind of saddened by two things. Number one is that we can't really use the ultra wide camera in 1080p at 60 fps so that's 1080p 30 and lower and number two is that with the most recent update for the s10e we lost the director's view feature okay so we no longer can record with both the front and the rear facing cameras at the same time as we could do with the older Galaxy devices. So, you know, it's funny how Samsung had a great feature back in the day, right? And then they took it away, and then a few years later, they reintroduced it as some great new feature when it was on all of their older Samsung devices, okay? So that their director's view that y'all see, that was actually on the older S6. S7, S5, S4, but it was called dual capture mode, right? But it's funny how technology works, right? When companies know they have something good, then they'll be like, okay, let's take it away. And then we'll reintroduce it later on and call it a brand new feature. Kind of like what they tried to do with the uh, SD card on the S6. And it was like, oh, let's take it away. And then... It was so, they got such bad heat for that that they had to bring it back. Funny things that manufacturers try to do. Funny things indeed. Anyways, let's get into this focusing test now. So let's bring in the oldie but a goodie. Still got some fire cameras on this one. The S7 Active. And let's try to do this focusing test. So let's get up right close on the text. And boom, man, that focus is good. That's more than legible right there. I don't know how well y'all can see that. What do y'all think? Look at the textures on the back of the device. Look at the letters. Yeah, I can read that, y'all. That's nice. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Especially in 1080p60. Oh, man, this thing looks like it's glistening right here. Oh, yes. And man, I'm telling you, this is what I like to see, especially considering how the S8 Active was struggling with the same 1080p60 in the same lighting scenario. All right, let's test out the focusing speeds. Okay, so taking it out, let's see how quickly it locks back up on the keyboard. Three, two, one, boom. And we're back on the keyboard, bringing it back in. How quickly can it lock on? And now we're back on the phone. Nice. And look again, look how sharp that text is. Look at that nice shallow depth of field going on in the background. Y'all can see it around my fingers. Good stuff. Good stuff indeed. One more focusing test. Let's see how long it takes to lock back up on the keyboard. Three, two, one. Boom. Ah, yes. These are cameras the way they should be. Yes, Samsung. Yes. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Let me know what y'all think. So this concludes the 1080p 60 FPS testing with the rare primary 12 megapixel camera on the S10e and the front 10 megapixel camera on the S10e. All right, 
Now, a little bit later on tomorrow, we're going to take, the, take these two devices out to the big yard and get into the final testing on both. So it's going to be 4K with the front and the rear facing cameras on the S10e here. And it's going to be 2K, okay, on the S8 Active on the front and 4K on the S8 Active on the back. So, I will see you guys and gals later with those other set of clips. And just so y'all know, I'm recording these together, but I will release them one after the other. So, y'all will either see all the coverage on the S8 Active, followed by all the coverage on the S10e, or y'all will see it vice versa. So, all the coverage on the S10e, followed by all the coverage on the S10 Active. Y'all know I try to drop a video a week, all right? So it is what it is. We might alternate camera videos. We might alternate drops. It is what it is. All right. But I will see y'all in the next clip, which is 4K on this one, front and rear. And again, 2K on the front on this one and 4K on the back on this one. All right. See y'all in the next set of clips. Be back. All right, everyone. And now we are back in with the final set of camera tests for the Samsung Galaxy S10e. So right here, we're testing out the ultra wide and the primary cameras in 4K at 30 FPS. Now, these cameras can do uh, 4K 60 at, you know, with the ultra wide and the primary, but my video editing application only lets me render and upload in 2K. So although I'm shooting this in 4K, 30 FPS, it will be downsampled then re-uploaded in 2K at 30 FPS. But y'all should get some nice quality footage. But let's get into the last set of testing with the ultra wide and primary cameras. And before we start, I gotta just say, really Samsung, really? I can shoot in 1080p 30, I can shoot in 4K 30, and I can shoot in 4K 60 with the ultra wide cameras, but I can't do 1080p 60 with the ultra wide cameras? Really, Samsung? Come on now, that's not cool. But it is what it is. <laughs> I'm, there's just some, some quirks about this device that Although it doesn't take away from my overall experience, it's kind of making me a little bit sad. <sighs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Anyways, let's get into the testing here. So let's do the pans. Let's do the exposure test. Let's do the focus test. And let's finish up with some zoom testing. So let's get started. We're going to pan from here all the way through to right about there. And back, we're gonna do it two times each. So this is number one. Okay, here we go with number two. Okay, and now let's do some exposure testing. So we should be lined up on the tree. Let's pan up and down three times and see how the cameras do. So we're lined up on the tree and coming down. Going back up. Now, how good was that transition? How was the exposure? How was the focus? How was that transition between the lighter and darker areas? That's one. Okay, that's what we're looking for when we do the exposure test. Here we go with number two. All right, that's two. And here we go with number three. That's three. All right, now let's test out the focus. Now we do have continuous autofocus as well as tap to focus on either the 16 or the primary 12 megapixel camera. So let's test it out now. Continuous autofocus first. 
we got our three subjects here so we got the trailer over there big tree in the center and then we got our cars off to the right let's use that blue jetta again so here we go continuous autofocus test let's go so trailer that should be lined up blue jetta that should be lined up and then big tree that should be lined up how was that let's do it one more time blue jetta that looks like it's lined up trailer that also looks like it's lined up big tree good good okay now let's test out the tap to focus so quick readjustment of the hands and let's do the same thing trailer tap locked up really fast focus there again almost instant blue jetta tap locked up again almost instant big tree in the center tap locked up again almost instant right now let's switch down to the primary cameras and redo the test again so coming down to the 12 megapixel okay and y'all could take a look at the difference in the field of view so ultra wide primary okay check out that difference now let's do it again so starting out with the autofocus first trailer Jetta big tree okay once again trailer Jetta big tree now tap to focus quick hand readjustment here we go Jetta tap locked up almost instant trailer tap locked up almost instant big tree tap locked up again almost instant all right one more time trailer tap locked up jetta tap locked up big tree tap locked up all right so now let's test out the zoom and let's wrap this video up so coming back out to the ultra wide so this is with no zoom whatsoever okay good stuff there then we're gonna go ahead and line up on that wire box in the distance there way out in the distance okay and we're gonna zoom in so let's get that focus let's lock that bad boy let's tweak the exposure just a touch that's perfect and let's start zooming in now as i said before you got your quick little shortcuts when you start to zoom in or you can program your volume rockers to help you with the zooming in so it's completely up to you so this is on the ultra wide okay we can tap down to the primary which is one times then we can go up to two times with the shortcut so this is two times then we can go four times then we can go eight times so this is eight times zoom with the primary 12 megapixel camera on the s10e all right okay good stuff now that's using the shortcuts we can do the same thing with pinch to zoom as well here so if we go back out okay back out to the ultra wide and we pinch okay pinch 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 two times zoom right here okay pinch 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 2.5 times zoom right here pinch 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 four times zoom right here okay pinch 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 eight times zoom right there and y'all can see we got a nice smooth transition between the cameras and y'all can see the stabilization is a little shaky a little bouncy y'all can see at max zoom the image is kind of washed out and it's a little degraded 
So that's why I would never recommend the max zoom on the cameras unless you have a dedicated zoom camera. But even then, I still wouldn't recommend the max zoom. Okay? Again, my maximums would be 1.5. Right here. Two times. Right there. Or 2.5. Right here. That's what I re would recommend with your smartphone cameras, okay? If you still want to get closer to your subject, you need to physically move closer to your subject at that point, all right? All right, so let's zoom back out now, back to the ultra wide, and now let me give y'all one final test of the front-facing cameras and give y'all my closing thoughts on the device and on the cameras and overall performance in general. I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, y'all. And here we have it. <laughs> the final camera test for the front-facing camera on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. Man, it's super bright out here. I should have worn my shades, but I left them in the car. So, let me know what y'all think of this vlog-style clip on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. All right? And I'm going to give y'all my closing thoughts. Oh, I got some in my eye. Okay, better? Not really, but let's keep it going. So, I've been using this device for a little bit over a week now. I've been putting it through its paces, and I still have a large majority of things to test. But in terms of the cameras, I think I got a nice grasp of it. So, if I was to recommend this device strictly based on the cameras, can I? Yes, I can. These are some really great cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. All right? So if you're picking up a device and you're basing it just on the overall camera performance, can I recommend this device? I would have to say yes. Especially if you could find it for in between 200 200 to about $350, go ahead and pick that up ASAP, okay? That being said, can I recommend the device on the whole, okay? Again, I would have to say yes. Overall, the performance is really, really solid, okay? Day-to-day -day performance is really, really solid, and pretty much any and everything that I tried to do with the device, aside from a few of my new things, works pretty much flawlessly and you get everything that you should be looking for in terms of a flagship okay so you got waterproofing you got wireless charging you got a always active capacitive fingerprint sensor that is really good you get some really phenomenal cameras on the front and the rear of the device and pretty much the essential cameras Okay? So you got a really good front-facing camera that can do everything the rear-facing cameras can do. Along with that, you get a really good ultra-wide camera that can do everything the primary camera can do. Okay, The essentials are on this device, and they work pretty much flawlessly. Pretty much. Okay. Other than that, you get a micro SD card slot for expansion, and you get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well. So all the features you should be looking for in a device, better yet, a flagship device, are here, okay? And it is available at a really great price. And this one right here is the globally unlocked variant of the device. So this will work on all the GSM and all the CDMA carriers here in the States. And it will work in all the GSM carriers abroad. And I've actually tested it. I've tested it on AT&T via FreeUp Mobile, good to go. And I haven't tested it on Verizon yet, but I think it should be good to go as well. Now, you are not gonna get 5G with this device. This is a 4G LTE only variant of this device, okay? Now, granted, if you're on AT&T, you put your SIM card in, you're gonna see 5G E pop up. That is not true. 5G, okay? AT&T just likes to rebrand things, okay? That is actually uh, 4G LTE or 4G LTE Plus. That's not true 5G, okay? 
So for those of you that see that and you're saying, E, I got 5G. No, you don't. Not really. No. Okay. But that being said, for what this device is, can I recommend it? And for these cameras, can I recommend it? I can say absolutely. Absolutely indeed. Now, if you pick it up used, like new, used, refurbished, like I did, or brand new, you're going to be, again, looking anywhere in that price point of 200 to about, if you pick it up brand new, you can still get it for a little bit over $400. But if you're looking at the used refurbished market, then you're going to be paying like three, three fifty ish, and then you throw in cases and accessories. It's going to be a little bit over, a little bit under four hundred dollars. And at that price, I can easily recommend this device, especially if you're looking at picking up and just dropping a, a big sum of money on one device, but you don't want to break the bank, but you still want a device that's going to last you a really long time. Yes, I can recommend this one for that. Okay. All right. So that pretty much does it for the testing on the cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S10e. Y'all stay tuned for the full review because we're going to break down everything you need to know in the full review. All right. As always, I hope you guys and gals are having a great day. I hope everyone is staying safe out there and I will catch everyone in the next one. Have a good one, everybody. We are out of here. Peace.